Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about nested if functions. That's the immediate if, the if, right? And that's where you can basically have an if then statement inside a function. And we're going to use them to categorize our customer spending. So it'll be high over a certain value, medium between a certain value in the middle, and then low if it's under that. So we need three conditions. And a standard if function only handles two conditions. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Today's question comes from Alicia in Woodland, California, one of my Platinum members. Alicia says, I'm working on a query to categorize customers based on their spending. I need to assign a category based on the total spent field. High if they've spent over 1000 medium if they've spent between 500 and 1000 and low if they've spent less than 500 How can I achieve this in Microsoft Access? Well, Alicia, we're going to use an if function. We're going to use two if functions together. It's called a nested if. Now, this will be an expert level video. What does expert mean? Well, it's my medium category of classes. There's beginner for people who are getting started. There's developer on the top end for people who were, you know, VBA programmers and stuff. This will be an expert level class. So you don't, it's a little bit beyond the basics, but you don't need any programming for this. You just have to know the if function. So if you haven't watched my if function video, go watch this first. This is crucial for understanding how the if function works. And I call it the if function because it's silly and you'll remember it, right? If I go if, right, there's two I's in front. It's not IFF. -F. A lot of people do it, including me. When I was first starting out, I used to write IFF -F all the time, right? It's immediate if, not if, 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 if. So just remember that. And it's, it's stupid, but you'll remember it. <laughs> And also make sure you understand how to use calculated fields, how to create calculated fields. We're going to do it both in a query and in a form today. So I'll cover both and it's covered in this video. These are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch these. Go watch them first and then come on back. OK, now normally in a query, this is how you'd set up a single if function. Let's say you just want to know if it's over a thousand or not high and low. Why two conditions? So we'll create a calculated field called worth and we'll say if credit limit I'm using credit limit, but you can use customer value or sales or worth, whatever, right? Whatever the field is, if that's greater than a thousand, then put the word high there. Otherwise put the word low there. Now, that's two conditions. Now, if you want to add another condition, okay, what we're basically going to do is we're going to write, let me go back here. We're going to write an entirely new if function and then just jam it in that spot right there where I put the X. That's where the low used to be, right? So now we're going to say, okay, if credit limit is greater than or equal to 500, then put medium in there. Otherwise put low. Now the thing to notice also about if functions is as soon as it reaches a true uh, a condition, it drops out. So you don't got to worry about putting in like an and or in here. All right. First, it's going to start here. It's going to say if it's a thousand, okay, we're good. Exit out. Someone's beaming in. Hold on. All right, so it'll be high if it's a thousand or more. If not, evaluate this. Okay, what's this? So now it's gonna say, is the credit limit greater than or equal to 500? If so, medium. If not, anything else, it's gonna be low. And final, the final function will look like that. And you can see there's the beginning of it, right? And here's the second function starting. And then you got your two parentheses at the end. That's the outer parentheses right there. Okay? Make sense? All right, let's throw this into the query now. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got a customer form. Now, I don't have total sales, but I do have a thing called credit limit. We'll just use the credit limit field. We'll pretend this is the sales field. It doesn't matter what field you use. Okay, let's start with a query first. So create query design. I'm going to bring in my customer table and then we can close this down. Just bring in the fields you want to see. Let's do customer ID, first name and last name, and let's bring in credit limit. All right, that's what we're going to use for our function. All right, let's come over here and let's make a calculated column, calculated field called worth. I'm going to zoom in, shift F2 so you can see better. We'll call it worth, and that's going to be if the credit limit is greater than 1,000, then put high here. Otherwise, put low. We'll just do the two for now. Okay, hit OK. Let's save it as uh, the customer worth query. And now I'll run it. And you should see highs and lows. There's a low. 
put a couple other ones in here. How about 50, right? And there's a low. Okay, high and low. Now, let's go modify it. Right here is where we're going to stick the other if function in. So we're going to write a whole new if function. If it helps, write it somewhere else and then copy and paste it in. Use Notepad if you want to. I use Notepad all the time. It makes more sense sometimes this way too, right? If credit limit is greater than or equal to 500, comma, put medium, otherwise put low. There's your whole function right there. We're going to cut that out, get rid of Notepad now, and then we're going to stick it right there. Paste. See? Sometimes it's easier to do that way too. Once you get the hang of this, then you can start writing the stuff by hand. Okay. All right. Hit OK. And now let's run it. And there's a couple mediums 500. All right. 86, 896. Right. There you go. High, medium, low. Okay. Save changes. Yes. All right. Now let's do the same thing, but in a form field, a form calculated field. In fact, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go back to that customer worth query. Let's go design view. I'm going to steal this thing because we're going to copy this whole thing. And again, uh, let me drop it on notepad. I like to use my notepad. Where are you? There you are. Just sit right there. Just sit there for a minute, notepad. Okay. Cancel. Let's close this. I use notepad all the time when I'm programming. All right, let's do the same thing here. And just for class, let's get rid of these guys. We don't need these. And let's slide this up. We're going to pretend this credit limit is sales again. I'm going to copy and paste. So we got a copy of that guy there. And we'll change the label over here. This will be the worth. Right? Let's open up this guy's properties. Now, first thing, give it a name. I'll just call it worth. And the control source is where it's going to get its data from. Right? Now, currently, it's bound to the credit limit field, just like this guy is. So right now, these will both display credit limits. So we're going to get rid of this, okay? And as soon as we do, you see that's changes to unbound. That means this is no longer bound to a field in the table. But we could put a calculation in there, just like we did in the query. All right, so let's shift F2 again. I'm going to zoom in so it's easier. It's tough to write a big, long function in this tiny space. That's why they give you the zoom. Shift F2 to zoom. Now I'm going to go back to Notepad. I'm going to grab this guy that I just copied, all right? And we're going to paste it in here. Now. In a form field, it's just written a little bit differently. In a query, you have to give it a query name. But this text box already has a name, right? We called it worth. So instead of doing this, we're going to just put an equal sign there. That's how you write it in a text box. It says this field is going to be equal to this same calculation. Okay. And there you go. Save it. We're going to close it. Close it. Open it. And there we go. There's our nested if function at work. Now, could you make a query for this entire form and put that calculation in the query? Absolutely. You certainly can. All right. Or you can put it directly in the form. It's completely up to you. There's a million ways to do everything in Access. Like I said, my job is just to teach you all the different Legos. It's your job to put them together however you want. Okay. How about a little bonus? Let's make this field change colors based on What's in it? Let's use some conditional formatting. If you're not familiar with conditional formatting, I got a whole video. I'll give you a link to it in just a minute. Here's how conditional formatting works. Click on this guy. We're going to go up to format. I'm going to open this up by double clicking on it. That, that makes the ribbon stay open. I'm going to hit conditional formatting. Now we're in the worth field, remember? So this is text. It's actually based on the text that's in there. So new rule. If the field value is equal to high, and no, you don't need quotes here. Then we'll make this green with white text. Hit OK. New rule. If the field value is equal to medium, then we'll make it, let's say, yellow. And if the field value is equal to low, let's make it red with white text. OK, we got those three conditions. We'll hit OK. We'll save the form, close it, open it back up again, and there we go. There's our conditional formatting. Let's move to somebody that's medium. So we got a low. Let's see, there's a low. I just passed it. See? That's pretty cool, huh? All right, a little conditional formatting for you. All right, here's some other videos for you to check out. Here's my free video on conditional formatting. There's lots more you can do with it. Check it out. There's a link. Put a link down below you can click on, too. Here's another video on something called the switch function. Now, this is a little more advanced. It's an alternative to nested ifs. 
Nested ifs are okay if you've got three, maybe four options, but if you've got a lot of options, like six or seven or more than that, use the switch function instead. It's easier to write for, for big, long stuff, okay? And yeah, you can also use dlookups. And all. There's, all, there's lots of advanced stuff you can do, but these two things are the basic ones that I stick with. And if you really like learning this stuff, I've got tons of lessons on my website. This is from my full course. I cover nested if functions in my Access Expert Level 10 class and lots of other stuff too, including the dlookup function. We do all kinds of extra stuff in each of my classes. So check it out. Again, I'll put links to all this stuff down below. And if you learned something new today, post a comment down below and let me know about it. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your Access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, 
be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.